Well, hello, hello, hello again there, Woman in Worth family. Welcome back to the continuation of our discussions. My sincere apologies um, for the last couple of weeks that I was not able to um, shoot my videos. All sorts of tech issues happening in the background. But hey, we're here and it's time to get cracking on to the new season, the things that God has for us. Now, as I mentioned, new season, it's one of the expressions that I use very gingerly because especially at this time of the year, we talk about new season. It's time to reclaim ours. It's time to do the new thing. And as I was thinking about that, I thought many of us will be saying that for a very, very, very long time without ever achieving the good thing, the great thing, the amazing thing that God has for us. And that's the reason for this series that I am going to begin. Uh, but just before we do that, we do the usual. We are in the month of December and my God, how good our God is. Bringing us from the 1st of January, 2023 to this day, the 7th of December or whichever day you're watching this 2023 I think I am confident that we have more than enough to give God thanks for so I want us to pause just for a moment and just give God thanks for the battles that we've won for the victories that we've won and even those that seem like we didn't win we're gonna thank God because all things work together for our good for those who are called by God and those who are called according to his purpose. So just take a moment to um, give God thanks. But this one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited about because I am going to go into a discussion that I call principles from the pages. And a lot of you who have been following me are aware that I'm very passionate about principles. Sometimes we look on the side and we say, well, how is he achieving this? And, and I am doing the same thing and I'm not achieving the same thing. Chances are you're not doing the same thing. It could be a matter of your season. But also, also and often is the case, it's a matter of principles. And you know what? I, I didn't come with any bad news or anything this morning. My God, after not coming on here for what, about two months, you would think that I would have great news. But I've been having a look at our lives as Christian people. How is it some people can achieve certain things that we believe God has placed in our hearts? Because sometimes we are not truthful. We said, well, you know what? I don't want all of that. We're not truthful. I don't know anybody, unless you Mother Teresa, who would rather live in the doldrums of life rather than being in a place where you can help somebody else, rather than being in a place where you can impact um, for impact others for the future, impact others for the kingdom. I, I, I just don't think we're being honest. Okay. I've heard people say to me and, oh, let me just start with the money part. Like people will speak about even as Christian people. Oh, um, you know, I don't want all that money and all. I, I don't believe them. I really don't. Because let me tell you this every day, whatever we're doing, we're using some sort of resource to do it, okay? I, if I'm trying to buy something, I'm, a lot of times I am not looking for even the best quality. I'm looking for what's cheapest because that's where my money could go. So to come and give this idea that I would prefer not to have a little bit more that, and, and I, you know what? I think it is so selfish because the more you have, the more you can give. But, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. Hallelujah. I am here to talk about principles from the pages. And the reason I want to talk about that is because we're going into a new year. Um, and we're going to start all these mantras about it's a new season. It's a new this and a new that. And unsurprisingly, a lot of us will end up doing the same thing over and over and over again if we don't change an understanding, an application rather, of the principles of the word of God. There is this guy I was watching on YouTube. And this guy is teaching from the Bible with, with uh, what do you call it, a, a cigar. I'm not promoting that. I'm not in agreement with that. 
But it was strange to me that a man who did not even name the name of Christ was looking through the book of Proverbs. And this guy testified because that's what it is. It might not be in church, but that's what it is. It is a testimony that because of the application from the book of Proverbs, he was able to move from poverty to prosperity. You believe that? And here we are as children of God, having a gold mine, the word of God, which is supposed to take us from glory to glory in Christ Jesus, which is supposed to take us from um, sorrow into peace, from poverty into prosperity, from all the things where we are, the places where we are, to where God has for us. So that's what I want to do. Now, as I was preparing this, I recalled that I had, I had um, written this book, The Crossover. And this is how you know how passionate I am about principles. It's called Practical Principles from the, book, the Study of Joshua. Okay? So in the next couple of weeks, this is the book that we're going to do. I'm going to be discussing this book. And I'll explain to you why the book of Joshua is important. The book of Joshua, as I call it, the crossover, is where the children of Israel were given this promise, but they never crossed over into that promise until we get into the book of Joshua. It is a book that is packed with principles for our progress. And this book is going to take us about at least six months to get through. I have done it with another ladies group in another country, and it took me almost a year to get through. Okay, it is an amazing, well, let me not say because I wrote it. But unlike all my other books, I would have sat down for my other books and I would have said to myself, okay, I want to write this book on this topic. The book of Joshua did not come from that. I simply, I was in a season where I was just digging deep into the word of God and just getting instructions from God. And that's how that book came about. I'm going to drop the link in um, at the end of this video because if you don't have the book, you're going to get lost, okay? But before that, because we're going to do that in January, so I'll give you ample time to get the book. We're going to continue a lot of the discussions in a Facebook page, which I have created. Um, <laughs> and some of you might be saying, Mitzi, how many Facebook pages are you going to create? Okay, the last one, apparently, I, has, I had attached that as a page to my existing Facebook page, so it didn't work very well. So a lot of you who are on that page, you will notice I'm very inactive and because I couldn't get to navigate that. So this page that I'm creating and I'm inviting you to um, is where we're gonna just discuss woman in worth matters, where we're gonna say we're not settling, we deserve the best. We are moving into the things of God even higher because we're applying the principles of God. Now let me show you how important the principles of God are. When we look, for example, I just chose this morning, when we look in the book of Genesis, what a lot of people do is they read the book for information. This book here is a book of revelation. So for example, do we know Father Abraham by many sons? We don't know him, right? Do we know Father Moses? We don't know him. Why are those books still in the Bible? They're in the Bible because we ought to learn some principles from these personalities, from these situations, from these circumstances? What is it that God wants us to apply to enter the promises, for example, that, that, that um, Abraham entered into? What are the things that David did while he was honored as a man after God's own heart? Because trust me, when I was 12 and 13, I had a problem with brother David because I don't understand how, let me change Maxine, how you could kill a man, sleep with his wife, and do all those atrocities. And God said, I have found you to be a man after my own heart. Hey, but then I understood it. Because some of us might not have done what David did by physically killing a man. But you know how many people we've killed with our mouths, with our actions, with our devices and vices? So, are we any better? But for the grace of God, some of us will not be here. But anyway, let's get into some of the principles. So, as a demonstration, when we look in the book of Genesis, right, there are certain principles there. 
The first principle we come across is the principle of three. Now, I am not going to go into any sort of theology around this. I'm just going to tell you what I've heard people say. And one of the things I have heard is that um, God speaks in threes. So, for example, if God is giving instructions, you're going to hear it. You're going to get a confirmation and another word of confirmation. And that has often happened to me to say, I know this is for sure that this is God speaking because I've gotten this confirmation at least three times. I am not proposing that this is any sort of theology. I am just saying that this is what I've heard and I can also attest to the fact that that has happened to me as well. Now, the second principle in Genesis is where God says, let there be light, let there so and so. I'm not going to go through that because I have gone through this in another study where I spoke about God coming in the earth and because he had now given or it was the design and the purpose for man to inherit the earth um, that the let means permission, giving the earth permission to produce. So the word let is really permission. Um, but one of the things now that I really want to get into in chapter Genesis 1 and verse 29, and I'm going to sit here just for a little bit, is the power of the seed, the principle of the seed. That's the principle I want to discuss today. So Genesis 1, 29, then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Okay. I have a girlfriend. She'll know who this is. Um, she'll know that I'm throwing stones at her. She will not have a fruit if it doesn't have seed in it. And her rationale, rightly so, is that if it doesn't have a seed in it, it is not God designed. It's artificially produced. Now, I believe her, but I'm not that disciplined. Child, please, if, if the grape is sweet and it don't have no seed in it, I'll eat that grape, okay? But I'm just saying, the seed was God's intention for reproduction. But I want us to look at this, not so much as the fruits, but more so in, in our instance as human beings. None of us who are on the face of the earth is here without a seed in us. Men are producers of seed, and there we come. Here we come. Okay. Um, and so God designed the principle of the seed because God is a God of generation. God is expecting us to reproduce as a result of this seed. Now, in fleshing this out, I want to look at a scripture. Um, St. Matthew, one of the parables. Uh, St. Matthew chapter which chapter is this said matthew chapter 13 and i believe the seed is so important that this is one of the chapters that has about three parables about the seed the first one is the parable of the sower now some people believe it's not the sower i am not no theologian i'm going to leave that as it is that's what is written in my bible that's what most of us know it as the parable of the sower and and then that ends at verse 23. Then 24, which is where I'm going to pick up, 24 onwards to, thir to 30, it is the parable of the weeds. And then 31 to 35, parables of the mustard seed. And then 36 onwards, Jesus explains this parable of the weeds. So, I just say all of that to say this is why I believe the seed, the principle of the seed is so important. So I'm going to read it. I don't normally read as most of you know. Um, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? The, the man said, the, the um, master says, No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the weed with them. 
Let them grow wheat, sorry, let them grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and, th and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring them into the barn. Right. In typical Mitzi fashion, I want us to go through this, okay? It's, it, we are extracting the principles. So, the first thing is, God, because it's an application to our lives, God only plants good seeds in our lives. That's the first thing. I was having this discussion with my daughter about whether or not, um, why can't God stop everything that's happening here in the earth? And I don't even want to get into this. It has to do with jurisdiction. The Bible says that the heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. I think that's Psalm 124. I'll, I'll go back and look and just um, put the reference down there. Um, so even in Genesis 1, we read that God gave us dominion over the, the earth. Okay? So the earth... Is our jurisdiction the earth is our territory and so that's why we say our oh, father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come in the earth in the earth because as we pray we can enforce the will of God from heaven in the earth because this is our jurisdiction this is where we, we, we can impact and influence and create change so a lot of times the things that are happening is because we have removed the importance of God in our daily lives. So that's why we have all these things happening in the earth. And it's not only up to me. It's not only up to you. It's so many other people. So suffice it to say, God only plants good things in our lives. Anything that is in our life that is not um, good, it's not from God. Or it is, why is this thing shaking? It's contaminated as we see with the weeds. So sometimes, you know, you will have your child, for example, let me just use a child or your niece or your nephew or a friend, whatever. And you say, well, how is it this child was doing so well? The child is primary school, did so well in secondary school and bam, college is, is like a totally different child. Apart from the influences of the world, also, it is possible that there was a seed in that child that you and I were not aware of, okay? Now, the, verse 25, is, it's, it's one of those verses that a lot of people use to say the, um, the importance of our dreams. It says, but while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came. Um, so yes, some people use this to say the enemy can penetrate our dreams, can infiltrate, sorry guys, is this desk, can change our course of destiny, by coming in and speaking into our dreams, that's a very controversial um, discussion for a lot of people. For me, it's not. It's very straightforward. There are contracts and there are covenants that are formed in our dreams, but that's another discussion for another time. For the purposes of today's discussion, when we look at while he was sleeping, what this really is telling us that while we were inattentive, while we were busy doing our own thing and not realizing that the enemy has come in here um, to, to, to change the course of our destiny, things can happen, right? So it is very important that we are attentive when we see certain things in our children, certain things in our environment, certain things in our work environment, in our house, pluck it up because those are weeds that the enemy is trying to sow among great seeds that God has for us. Okay? Now, here is the, the, the one of the most important things I want us to get this morning. Is, the second part of this says, His enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. Watch the next part. And went away. Why didn't the Bible say that the enemy came, sowed the weeds, and paid attention? Why is that? Because the enemy understands some things that even as Christian people, we do not understand. The enemy understands principles. 
And that's why I want us to understand this. I want us to understand these principles in this season. Okay? Because the enemy did not tend to the seed. Right? The enemy knew I plant this seed. They're sleeping. In other words, they have been the enemy has been monitoring us and realized that we're not even going to wake up soon. Because we are so busy in church singing, sweeter gets the journey every day. You know, serving Jesus really pays, you know, um, all kind of things. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but these are little things that the enemy has us saying. And what happens? We become inattentive to what he is doing. No, I am going to get into this a little bit more. And I'm going to pause here for this morning because I don't want to rush it. And like we discussed in the last season, I don't want these um, studies to go on too long. Okay, so we are going to go into the seed and how it works and how the enemy understands certain things that we don't understand. We're going to continue with the principle of the seed. And so as I wrap up, I speak a blessing over you. I pray God cover you, keep you, guide you. I pray good success over your house, over your family, over your husband, over your wife, over your children, over your finances, over every institution that you stand in. I speak this in the morning that because you are in alignment with the word of God, that everything you touch shall turn into gold. I shall see you next week for the next session. God bless you and lots of love. Mwah.